In this video, I'm going to be giving you a complete guide to the Squarespace style editor. So let's start with finding the Squarespace style editor. You can find the style editor if you click on design and then style editor. Now, wait for it to load. All right, so I have my style editor open and now we need to find the option. So say I wanted to change um, the font of this um, heading, this is my heading three. Um, so there's a few ways that you can go about doing this. The first way and the easiest way, which I would suggest you use most of the time, is to just hover over the item. You'll notice as I'm hovering over different items on the page, a little blue line appears around them. This is by far the fastest way to get something in your style editor because there's so many options here. Trying to find the right one takes a while if you're just scrolling. So. You just hover over the item you want and you click on it. There we go, heading three comes up really quickly. The other way to do it is to search. If you know the name, you know it's called heading three, then you can just search heading, you can find the details there. The last way is the long and old way is to just scroll through all of the options. Now there's something that you should know about finding the different options and that is you need to be on the page where the option exists in order for it to show up in your style editor. So an example of this is, say if I wanted to change my blog layout, you won't see the blog option in here at all because I'm not on the blog page. The first thing I'd need to do is, if I click on it now, it's just gonna bring up the option, it's gonna bring up my navigation options. So I need to go back to design, click over to my blog page, then click back on my style editor, Okay, so now that I'm on my blog page, I can actually find the blog option. So I can click anywhere in the blog area and blog is suddenly going to show up here. So just a reminder that anytime you want to change something, you need to be on the page where that thing exists in order for the option to show up in the style editor. It still existed in the style editor when I was on the home page, but I can't actually see it until I get onto the blog page. Same thing goes, for example, I have my navigation or my announcement bar up here. Um, if I had disabled my announcement bar and tried looking for the announcement bar or searching for it in the search bar or scrolling down and trying to find it, it wouldn't find it because that option isn't enabled. Same thing, if you don't have a button block on your website yet and you search to try and change the size or the color of the button block, you wouldn't be able to do it because the button doesn't exist on the website. So again, you need to be on the page where that thing exists or have that thing enabled on your page in order for the option to show up here. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is run you through some common things that you might change in your style editor. So let's do the first one. The most common thing that you're probably gonna change is the look and style of your text. So I just clicked here, this is some body text. I'm gonna click the down arrow of body text and I can select a different font here. If you scroll up to the very top of the um, font list, you're gonna find all the fonts that are already being used on your website. So this is sort of a quick way to get to the fonts that you're already most frequently using. So say you want your heading to and your body text to be the same font, just come up here and it'll give you the short list of the ones that are already being used on your website. Otherwise, you can go through the long list here um, and choose another font. So I'm gonna choose this one. You'll see my font changed. I'm also able to change the weight of things. Um, that font is already bolded, um, just so you know. Um, I can italicize it if I want to. Um, the other thing to know is that say if I set this to italicized, then all of the text, all the body text on my website will be italicized. The other option is to leave it normal and then just when you're writing, just highlight over something and italicize that bit of text. So normally I suggest leaving these things as normal um, most of the time. I can also change the size of the text by scrolling up and down here, so back. The spacing between the letters. You can also actually, if you get stuck or can't get it quite right, is you can click and then um, change the number yourself if you want to. Text transformation, say you want all of your text to be uppercase, you could just select that, lowercase or capital. Um, and then line height, this changes. Um, you can't tell so much right now. 
um, because there's no line below this one. Um, but the higher the line height, it just means the more space between the lines on your page. Now, if you want to go back and you don't remember what this setting was before, you can just click the little X button here and it'll set it back to whatever you had it at before. To save that, you just click off and then you can click the save button or you can also edit quite a few things. You'd say edit your um, heading three next and then click save afterwards. Um, the other option that you have here is a back button. Um, so whatever you did last, you can hit the back button or the forward button um, to change that back again. The next thing which is pretty common that you might wanna change is up in your navigation. So I'm gonna click on my navigation. I can click more specifically, say just on these bits of text, or I can click on the whole navigation, which includes say my logo, and then I get all the options. Um, so depending on if you click specifically on the logo, I just get the logo or the navigation. If I click on the whole area, I get the whole area. So um, I can change the background color here. I can change padding as the amount of space above and below. Um, let's see. Brand position, top left. Um, say I wanted this to be in the middle. I would set it like so. Um, I could have my social icons and maybe my search bar over here. Um, depending on which template you have, changes how many options you have for this top navigation area. The template which I'm using is called the Rally template and that is within the Brine family. And as of recording this video, that is by far the most flexible Squarespace template. So it's generally the one that I suggest you use um, because it has the most style editor options um, by far from any other template, including a lot of options for the navigation area. You can change how big your logo is by changing the width right here. Um, and then you can change the font of your navigation titles. Let's see, that one looks nice. And I want it to be a bit heavier. There we go. You can also change the color right here. There's a few ways to change color. The one that I normally do is I take my HTML color code. Um, that is a code of six mix of letters and numbers um, to change things. That's what I normally do. There we go, got some yellow. <laughs> um, what I suggest you do is to keep a list of these color codes that you normally use um, to then just copy and paste them in. The other thing which I frequently do um, is, I'll just hit show all. If you scroll through your style editor, you tend to have some colors that you use frequently. I'm just gonna double click, hit copy, then go back to this option, go to the color and paste that color in. Oops. There we go. Um, and depending again on which template you have, you'll have options. So this is the active page. I'm on the blog page right now. I could also change this to sort of be maybe green, but a bit darker. Um, so it's more prominent which page you are on. Set these all back. There we go. And hit save. I'm gonna go back to my home page so that I can show you um, a few other common things that you might tweak in your style editor. And remember, every time they want to actually change pages on the website, I need to get out of the style editor or it'll just give me the option to change the style of that button or navigation item that I just clicked. So, next thing that I want to do is change the color of this button here. So I'm going to, again, click on the button to pull up the option. Um, you can have it be an outline. So, oops, sorry, solid outline. Um, or I liked the raised buttons personally. Um, you can set the color of the buttons here. Um, now this one is called an alternate button color. That is because it is on top of an image. So in my template, I have the option both for the buttons that are just on say like plain white background or also an option to change the ones that are happening um, over top of an image background. Again, you just click on these little bits to change the colors and the fonts and the sizes of all that sort of thing. In Squarespace, you always have three buttons. Um, you have a medium button, a small button, and a large button. So you can set the different colors um, and font sizes and font styles um, of all three buttons. And then if you use, again, the Brian template or any one of the templates in that family, you actually get six options, um, small, medium, large, for both the alternate type and the regular type, which is just on a white background.
Okay, the next thing I want to show you is changing your blog layout. So I have to go back again, actually. Get out of the style editor to click on my blog page to then go back into the style editor. Okay, so I am here in my blog area and I have all the options for my blog here down the left hand side. Um, the reason which I really like the template which I'm using, again that's the rally template within the brine template family and so all the brine templates have the same um, functionality. Um, this one has lots and lots and lots of options for the layout of the blog, where some other templates you'll find you won't get nearly as many um, options in terms of uh, the style editor for changing around the look of your blog. So let's set it. Um, say I would rather have more items per row. I can change that right here so that I set it to be three items per row instead of two. I can set the spacing between the items. Set it back to what I had it. Alignment left, that's all the text being um, aligned to the left. Show image, I could choose to show the image or have the images not shown. The images that are showing up here are um, changed in your blog. Um, so you up add these images within your um, thumbnail area of your blog editor. Um, I can choose how I want these images to lay out. So do I want them just to be square? Um, it depends on the type of images that you're making. For me, it makes the most sense to do these vertical ones. I can choose to show the title or not, show the excerpt, that is this little bit down here of sort of teaser text showing what is in there. Um, I can choose where I want to put the read more link, the spacing, um, the metadata, that is the um, date it was posted and the category. Um, those are both bits of metadata. So I can choose if I wanna blow the content, or below the title, or above the title, wherever I want. Pagnation label is all the way down here. It's this one. So I want to show to go to the next page. Do I want there to be an arrow or not? Say yes, I do want that there. Um, and you can change the weight of that. I can also change the font there as well um, and the colors too. One other common thing which you might want to do is enable parallelix scrolling. There we go. So I'm just searched parallelix. I click the enable button. Um, I would suggest enabling parallelix smart crop if you are doing this. It just crops your images in a better way. Um, then I will save this to show you what it actually looks like. So parallelix is when it looks like the content on top of your background images moves at a different speed and sort of, um, what would you say, it sort of melts into the page or melts into itself. Um, so that's when the content on top is moving at a different speed from the content in the back. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go back to turn that off. Go. And then the last thing which I want to show you is the mobile style editor. So in order to see, we can change the mobile styles, like just search mobile in here, and I get all the mobile options. Now, however, if you're editing this, normally on desktop you can see as it's happening. With mobile, you would also want to see as it's happening. So in order to see the page as it would look um, on a mobile device, you would click this little down arrow here at the top select over to the cell phone, or you could also choose a tablet if you wanted to. Um, and then again, you can just select little bits that you would like to change. Um, so example of one thing you might wanna do is say you want this little bit up here, your logo, search bar, and um, hamburger icon to always be fixed. Um, you fixed top mobile navigation, so as we scroll, it's always there. You can change the color back there. Da -da -da. Um, yeah, you can enable um, having a search icon there or not. Definitely useful for a mobile site so you can quickly get to what you're looking for. Um, yeah, and then you can just change all the colors basically. Um, click. So if you want to see what that looks like open, you have to click out of the style editor, open it, go back to the style editor in order to change these bits here.
There we go. And so again, I can change my options right there just by selecting the item. Perfect. So I hope this video was helpful for you. For more similar resources like this, definitely head over to the Page Studio blog, www.thepagestudio.com forward slash blog for lots more resources just like this one.